In the course of the debate yesterday on the Home Ministry's demands, a number of points were raised by honorable members. In particular, I am happy that some members of this house appreciated the efforts that were being made by the state governments as also by the center so far as the various subjects under discussion were concerned especially so far as the law and order situation was concerned. It was very good on the part of some members to have appreciated the efforts made by the state governments in this regard. There were a number of other points also which were raised and in respect of some of them, I should like to enlighten the house so far as the real position is concerned. These points deal very briefly with Tripura, the Andamans, Delhi and Gujarat and they have also some bearing on the question of the scheduled castes, the scheduled tribes and the services. These therefore are the various points and I should like to place the correct picture before this house so that the house will know what government have been doing so far as all these questions are concerned. With your permission, I would like briefly with Tri Tripura first. When the Part C States Act was passed, in view of a number of circumstances, the geographical position of the state, the backward nature of the state, the existence of a very large number of tribal people, and a number of other circumstances, it was considered advisable so far as the administration of this state was concerned that it ought to be directly under the government of India so that they can spend more for the purpose of developing this backward area. Now the question is often raised why we are not immediately introducing popular government in this tiny state, the population of which is half a million. That question cannot be considered singly but will be considered in the context of the report that we are receiving very shortly in the course of the next three or four months from the state's reorganization commission. The whole question will be considered. Their recommendations will be placed before the House and only then government will take appropriate action. So far as the present regime is concerned, it will also be kindly noted that it is not an autocratic rule in the popular accepted sense of the term. Therefore, I am pointing out to this house certain circumstances from which the house will gather that government have been trying their best to improve the conditions there and to develop it to the extent that is possible. I would make a brief, very brief reference to the expenditure during the last three years. For the year 1950-51, government spent Rs 95 lakhs. There is a considerable scheduled tribes population as also a scheduled caste population. Mostly they have come from Bangladesh. A sum of rupees 17 lakhs has been set apart for the purpose of improving the condition of the scheduled castes as also the scheduled tribes. Then very great efforts are being made for the purpose of rehabilitating the refugees, most of whom are from the scheduled castes and it will be found that as a matter of fact 1,90,000 people have been rehabilitated in the tiny state of Tripura. Out of them 99,000 and odd have been rehabilitated in government colonies and land loans have been given, facilities for education have been given and in respect of medical facilities it will be found that the amount has increased by at least five times. Then a point was made the unemployment was rising. So far as the question of unemployment is concerned, it is a general question and has only a very short specific point so far as the state is concerned. You will find that in view of the development projects that government have undertaken the number of persons employed or the service personnel in this tiny state has increased. These persons are actually under employment in respect of the different departments so far as development projects are concerned. Then you will also noted that 
for the purpose of providing good buildings for offices, especially for schools and hospitals, the government have a proposal before them which is being implemented according to which rupees 1 crore are going to be spent for the purpose of constructing of various buildings. Then we are also taking care of to see that crime is not increasing at all. Very vague statements were made that crime was increasing. In fact, so far as the border area is concerned, there were only two decades and no more. Even all the offenders in respect of these offenses have been brought under control. Sir, now I would like to say something about tea. This time there is taxation on common tea, the tea that we are consuming here so that there can be more earnings through export. But if we examine this tea industry, we will find that we are not getting good results either by the efforts of the tea board or by the efforts of government. One fourth of the production of the whole country is represented by tea, but that much of attention is not given by the government to this industry. They think that it is already getting foreign earning and so it should continue to get it. But efforts should be made not only to develop this industry, but also to improve the industry through research and other things. As you know, in some parts, the foreign companies which are working here are neglecting this industry. They are only after the profits, they are not thinking of the development of the industry. There is room for development in many respects, but it all depends upon research work and research stations should be set up wherever there is neglect. No doubt the tea board is there, but the tea board is not seeing to these things. That is our complaint. In the tea board, people are there who are not at all eager to see how this industry could be developed, how we could earn more profits, how the quality could be improved, and how the quantity could be increased. We are not seeing to that. I come from a part where the tea industry plays an important part in the economy of that area. But I find that it is being neglected from year to year and no attention is given to it. I find that there is this drought menace in the tea plantations. As a result, no further improvement in plantation is made. There, the development of tea can be undertaken. I only suggest this to our finance minister. When you are giving relief to coffee, why are you not giving relief to tea, which is earning much more for an exchange? I humbly urge our finance minister to see to it and remove this burden on common tea. Now I would like to say a word about betel nut. There is taxation on betel nut which is imported. In my part, large quantities of betel nuts are being smuggled. So there was a representation from that area saying that betel nut could, should also come within the purview of customs duty and that part should be declared a port. A representation was made to the finance ministry as also the commerce and industry ministry, but nothing is done. I urge upon them to see to this weather smuggling which is giving no benefit to the government and which is going to be increased cannot be stopped. Though our land customs department is there, it cannot deal with smuggling effectively. Smuggling is going on. So if you want to stop it, some definite steps should be taken and the representation which was made from that part should be given due consideration. Now some other friend also touched upon rural economy and cottage and village industries. One thing we must do that is we must remove the disparity between the town and the village. If we are rem to remove it, what should be done? What should develop small industries, village industries and cottage industries? How can they be developed? For that power should be there. Now, my friend was saying that out of 6 lakhs of villages, only 19,000 villages have been electrified.